Thank you very much for, for your introduction, Indigo. And thank you to all the delegates. At the outset, I'd like to thank Technica for organizing a wonderful conference. And I'd like to give a big view from Kolkata, India. Throughout the morning, you have heard so many good experiences, new approaches to vocational excellence. That is very, very important. I think this new approaches has been validated in the time of COVID-19. When you have requested me to give the closing remark, I thought instead of repeating the same excellence, you know, summary, I was thinking we are passing through a very difficult time. You know, I am now living in Kolkata, India, and traveling across the region in a developing country. COVID has devastated this area. And also, you all know, a cyclone has also devastated the area. I was thinking what the meaning of vocational excellence to the people, those who are suffering in difficult time. Is this kind of vocational excellent discussion is valid to, to the people, those who are struggling? And that's my story. And I'm going to share my experience with ground reality that vocational excellence is really valid in the time of COVID-19. Next. During COVID-19, before I go, let's look what is excellence. To me, excellence is a journey to continuous innovation. You cannot set excellent innovation. Not only that, you cannot separate continuous innovation also. Once you do an innovation and stop it, that is excellence. Excellence demands continuous innovations. And I will discuss that important issue now in the context of COVID, that once you have an innovation, how it is important to continue that one in the excellence format. Next. During COVID-19, we have confronted with three major crises. Number one crisis is the health crisis. Second we have crisis we have faced is the learning crisis. And the third we have faced the mindset crisis. We will discuss all this crisis in detail one by one. All these three crises has given us three types of challenges. And these three challenges demand three types of innovative solutions. And this is a big type of innovations that has been demanded from us. And that we will discuss one by one, which health crisis has demanded, what kind of learning crisis has demanded, what mindset crisis has demanded and which we will take in next slides. Next, health crisis. If you look at the health crisis, what is the major issue? The first major issue, irrespective of the country, worldwide, majority health workers are at the risk, frontline workers. Why? There is a huge shortage of PPE, personal protective equipments. You all know, starting from the developed country to developing countries, we have seen those who are saving our lives. Why they are being uh, facing that? Because there's a simple, there's no PPE. Simple things has become a major problem because global chain has been disrupted. And there's a huge shortage of medical equipments, ventilators, gloves, surgical masks. I was in India traveling from one place to another, shocked to see what is a painful situation. 
can you tibet can tibet be silent to such a situation innovative solution is demanded at this stage i have seen the institution came up with response solution those tibet institution have a 3d printers they came up with a face shield they came up with some kind of new innovation like a snorkeling pattern kind of uh, shield uh, materials in response to all man even in europe many of the countries like in italy in czechoslovakia in canada has come up with portable ultrasound devices in india we have seen some test kit test kit was a huge shortage there was portable test kit demand was came ventilators is a shortage multi user low cost ventilators machine has come what i like to like to share with you here where air city comes huge demand is is coming up the role of vocational school comes into play an innovative solution comes innovation is not for technology for technology say this is for humanity one of the question in the morning somebody says how humanity is the center of the discussion here is the humanity in the crisis it is not technology in this this is humanity which demands you your intellect your all the energy to be put into come into play and i am glad to say that big small all kind of tibet institutions are to play that role because we are at the cross road of the humanity crisis what lesson we have learned from there number one concept that we have learned from this is the productive school concept you know every tibet school has some kind of workshop and this workshop become productive school small and medium scale industry they become a permanent you know workshop creating a productive school culture they are producing goods and going to the you know to meet the shortage this is a fantastic way of one way serving the community serving a meaningful work serving a revenue this i think a new model we need to serve second it promotes public private community partnership we always say ppp model we some say public private community model and here in india in bangladesh in developing country i have seen community play a very important role and they came forward to say that we have to take an inspiration in the ecosystem we have to play a very important role i think this part we have to take to consideration next next now the learning crisis what is the major learning crisis we have seen 1.54 billion learners are out of school in 188 countries unesco statistics unbelievable so they are in a lockdown period confined in the in the home how you will reach out is there any methods that has been worked out who is major I mean, how to bridge this sudden interpre- interruption in learning this is major sufferers are developed country and the developing country technological development is lagging but you cannot stop you have to find out a way and there i have seen many mixed models are coming up this is not like like a incremental way of looking the thing this is also an you know like hybrid models are coming new tvet delivery system is coming up tvet is not just you know uh, school based it has to be apprentice model we know dual training system we know there are another type of you know combinations hybrid models are also coming in a big way many tvet institutions with innovative solutions a mixed model technology which as well i was referring like you know i have seen public channel tv tv system has been combined with telephony with a combination 
I have seen some kind of Zoom or different type of uh, type of video conferences with WhatsApp combination being a role. They are coming up. What all these are giving a solution is kind of some kind of uh, you know ground innovations are coming. But those who are advanced country, they are full fledged online education game, but augmented reality they have experimented that's a fact that's fine but we have to see that many countries are lagging and digital gap becoming a very big one and we need to see and we have to reduce that gap and we have to play a very important role so what lesson learned we have done what are the lesson learned the first lesson learned that we have to see is that private uh, public partnership providing digital plan. Many, you know, private partnership has come up, which has given a new, new digital platform. How many of you are now so much engaged in webinar? Have you imagined Technica is organizing a, such, a, such a fantastic platform, which has got 1,700 audience? I never imagined this is happening. This is a digital platform. They are comb combining two channels, making it more, you know, attractive. And so many, you know, tools are coming up. And we have to think, we have to make this online education more interactive, flexible, more appealing, and much to do about that. Second, not use public media, mass media, radio even, television, an interactive way because we have to think all countries digital gap we have to keep in mind and that's also we have to keep and reach out to the people and I think Commonwealth of Learning has emphasizing this one for a long way in Africa and which we have to keep in mind this also is one of the key issues in my in, in, in the journey of digital gap. Next. The next I will have to say that the one I think uh, some of you has raised the question of human, where is the human centered? I think the third crisis is the mindset crisis. And to me, this is the major thing we have to keep in, in the post agenda, in the excellence, vocational excellence. I will appeal to all of you, we have to revisit our all the agenda in a new way. Development agenda in the past has given very limited attention to social and environmental dimension, which European Commission has, has focused given now. So post-COVID recovery has to call a reset in our innovative mind with a new development agenda. Number one, we all know sustainable development should not be on paper. It should be on the ground. We have to practice now. Not be only seven people writing every time and saying something. We have to do it in practice. Biodiversity. We have not given much more higher priority on that. We are talking of growth. What, where about the inclusive growth? How we are giving the, you know, keeping that inclusive growth in. Health is a neglected set, sector in vet. Where is the health? We are not discussing about the health. Health budget is very low in many countries. And to keep in mind that if health is poor, vet is poor. Life skill, where is the life skill? And we need to high values on life skill. Values education. We are, what is the use of a high professionals without values? Values 4.0. We have to give much higher order on that. And finally, I think we are looking for the madness, the madness of the people for this prosperity, materialism, instead of peace, peace of mind, and peace education has to be their agenda. What lesson we have learned from this process? An enhanced Tibet agenda should be our world future. It is not about only Tibet, it is a greening Tibet agenda, sincerity. Why all our habit production, consumption, lifestyle, if we don't raise all this issue, we will never, we will never change the future.
We have entrepreneurial one has been discussed a lot. I don't want to repeat, but the future is a digital Tibet. New normal is coming in a big way. So we have to give high way for adult learning. Also, the digital Tibet has to be kept in mind. We need to change the way we think and we, we act on this. <laughs> Next. What are the triggers of vocational excellence in the post-COVID recovery? Number one, acts as a bird of social and applied innovation. So social and applied innovation will be the most important, not just technological innovation. Second, Tibet as a development vector for local and regional growth. We have to keep in mind, if, if we are not vocal for local, I think if we don't take local to consideration, I think the crisis has given us lesson that if local are not part of our development agenda, we are helpless. And regional growth is very, very important. Bottom-up approach is very, very important. The third, Tibet as an initiator to create a culture of bottom-up innovation and excellence. Excellence from top-down has, has an enough. We have put a lot of resources on that, but we need to have excellence from bottom-up. And that's why bottom-up innovation, and we have a hybrid, hybrid model like top-down and bottom-up need to be. It need to be combined and mixed. What will be the result of all this thing? The result will be Tibet institution will contribute to be continuous innovation, employability, and social cohesion. That will be the major challenge. The next. The next is the, what is the mood questions? Which institution trigger vocational excellence in COVID-19? What, what we have seen so far in India, Asia, when I, I was the institution, those who are adaptable, flexible, responsive, manage change and uncertainty, they have taken lead faster than many institutions become very obsolete, ideal. They didn't, they didn't know what to do at the time. Even some of the institutions do not have any 3D printer. Most of this institute, 90% I have visited, no printer, no fab lab technique, very, you know, very rudimentary ways. We need to skill them. We need to give them the opportunity to take that, that in, a, in, a, in a such a situation, they are really helpless and they, they become very idle. But their intention may be there. So how important is that? adaptable, flexible, responsive, and manage change. They need to drive innovation with skill ecosystem, support local development and regional growth, initiate excellence and teaching and learning, excellence in teaching and learning, and specialization in digital, climatic change, and sustainable development. What I mean, you must have in one area some kind of specialization. You don't have to be in all specialization. That's all. that's fine. You can't, but you have to be at least in one area. If you are rooted on the ground and you some work for the locality, you can survive and people will appreciate the role because you are responsive. You are really want to do something for that. I like to conclude my presentation with a quotation. Next, the quotation is, necessity is the mother of invention. Scarcity is the mother of innovation. Today in the COVID-19, scarcity was everywhere. There is the scarcity of face shield. There is a scarcity of ventilator. There is a scarcity of everywhere. It's very painful to see. 
So with all spirit, with school, try to fill up and try to do something. This is the starting point. But real invention will come on post-COVID case when all this innovation, continuous innovation, will give a necessity to have a bigger vision to give excellence in a new order. Thank you and healthy. We have to keep this journey in a long way. Thank you. Thank you very much.